Have you ever woken up with a spot on your eye and wondered, what is that? It could be a pterygium. In this episode of OcuTalk, Dr. Neil Gaiman will be telling us all about pterygium, signs to look out for, and how they are treated. Dr. Gaiman? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us, Dr. Neil Gaiman. Dr. Gaiman, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks. This is, uh, this is really exciting, actually, so it's my pleasure. <laughs> well, we're very, we're very excited to have you on here, and thank you again for joining us today. Uh, Dr. Gaiman, before we get started, I was hoping that maybe you can introduce yourself uh, to our audience, so let them know a little bit about your background and your specialty. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm Dr. Neil Guyman. Uh, I actually work in Idaho, Idaho Falls at a private practice, a group practice. We do uh, a lot of uh, dry eye disease, a lot of medical optometry. And uh, recently in the last year, I've actually started a YouTube channel called Dr. Eye Guy, where I just like to educate people about the eyes, give eye tips, review eye products. And yeah, it's been fun. It's been kind of a good mesh of passion hobby and and profession kind of all in one so it's been kind of fun well awesome uh, thank you for that introduction dr guyman and again thank you so much for joining us today uh, dr guyman for our discussion today we were hoping that maybe you can discuss with us a little bit about pterygium what exactly is pterygium yeah so pterygium one of the the weird words in optometry kind of like saying astigmatism or something it's one of the worst words ever sounds like a horrible disease like you're going to give a it's going to, you're going to have like six months to live or something, but it's actually um, not that bad. And then, and can actually be pretty common. Uh, so one thing that I like to tell people, let me show you kind of a little picture here of what a kind of a classic pterygium might look like. And this one's kind of pretty, pretty advanced, uh, uh, an advanced pterygium there, but it's also referred to as a surfer's eye. And pretty much what it is, it's a benign growth. So let's get that right off the, the see that right off the, the top is that it's a benign growth. A lot of people get scared when they see this on their eye, but it's a benign growth and it's a growth of the conjunctiva, which is kind of that um, tissue that surrounds the white part of the eye and the, and the inner eyelids there. And sometimes it'll start just overgrowing and will grow over the cornea, which is the clear dome of the eye. And then, yeah, you'll get that kind of look or that growth that's covering that cornea right over the colored part of the eye there. Well, excellent. Thank you for that information, Dr. Guyman. And we really do appreciate the visuals there. Uh, Dr. Guyman, what causes pterygium of the eye? Let's see here. The, the big uh, cause or the things that are associated with that pterygium is you're usually you're, you're exposed to UV light quite a bit. So UV light damage also, if you're in a dry, dusty environment, that can definitely make you more prone to develop a pterygium. And that's also why that's kind of coined the term a surfer's eye. So people that are out surfing, they're not wearing sunglasses, they tend to develop a pterygium. And, uh, and so that's kind of like where, where it, come from, it comes from there. And we actually see this a lot up here in Idaho. We have a lot of farmers that maybe aren't wearing any sunglasses and they're in a dry, dusty environment and they tend to get a pterygium. And so I see it actually quite a bit. Oh, wow. Again, thank you for letting us know the causes of pterygium, Dr. Guyman. Uh, so I want to ask, how severe is it? Is it something that will go away on its own? I know earlier you said it, it looks ben it's, it's benign, but is it something that will go away on its own or does it need medical attention? Yeah, so <clears throat> that's actually a good question because that's what most people actually want to know is you know what's going to happen with this growth on my eye. And so most of the time, luckily, if it's mild, it's usually non-health and non-vision threatening. And so a lot of times we just tend to watch it. Now, unfortunately, it won't go away on its own. A lot of times I kind of reference it, and maybe this is a bad reference, but I reference it as kind of similar how you can build up a callus on your hand from you know, working out in the garden. It's kind of, the eyes kind of the same way it's like the eyes version of a callus except for this thing won't go away like a callus on your hand it'll just kind of stay on the eye unfortunately <laughs> well again thank you for that visual dr gaiman we appreciate that and 
Dr. Gaiman, what are the typical treatment options that are available? Uh, are, what would you recommend? Yeah, so <clears throat> right off the bat, the like I said, if it's more mild, uh, a lot of times you're 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 playing the game of trying to make it uh, not grow, or you're trying to kind of slow the progression down quite a bit. And so because it's more developed from UV damage, you're going to want to start wearing sunglasses as much as you can. If it's more dry eye related, you want to stay on top of using artificial tears, keeping your eyes lubricated. If you have dry eye syndrome, you just want to stay on top of your dry eye treatments that you're already doing. So those are kind of the big uh, treatments that you want to do when it's kind of a moral uh, or a mild, uh, maybe moderate pterygium that you're that you're treating there. Now, if it's more a severe type of a pterygium. So that means it's really grown over the cornea. Maybe it's really elevated. It's getting red and inflamed, sometimes painful, or if it's growing so much that it's actually covering the, the pupil, it's actually getting in the way of the vision, then treatment becomes a surgical consultation. So you can actually have it surgically removed. Well, perfect. Thank you again for that information, Dr. Guyman. And Dr. Guyman, I was hoping that maybe you can talk to us a little bit more about uh, pterygium excision. What exactly is that? And what is the procedure like? And how does it work? Yeah, so, <clears throat> so that's a good question. So yeah, when, when it gets to that point where you're actually going to have a surgery, they will pretty much remove that extra, that extra growth over the cornea and the conjunctiva. And they, they will actually, it's kind of like peeling off layers of skin, you know, overgrown skin. And they'll take that off. And what is tricky, though, is it actually leaves uh, a divot, uh, a part excised out of your eye. And so that comes where, where it gets a little bit tricky. So they can either decide, well, we're just going to leave that open. We're not going to put anything to fill in that little divot that was left from the surgery. Or they might do a graft. And they might take a graft from another part of your eye. Or more recently, they've been, been kind of using amniotic membranes. So they can use an amniograft to graft onto that spot or that tissue that they took off. And that actually helps with healing time. It also helps prevent further or in the future, a regrowth of that pterygium, which has been kind of nice for people. Wow. Again, thank you for the visuals, Dr. Guyman. I'm, I'm getting a good picture of everything here. Um, so Dr. Guyman, what is the recovery process like for this then? Uh, how long does it take? And is there like a post-procedural protocol that you would recommend? Yeah, usually right after you have the surgery, I mean, you're going to probably have your eye patched uh, and you're going to try not to rub your eye. Re recovery takes sometimes weeks or months. Now, now the good thing about the surgery is that usually it's mostly painless. Uh, your eye may be irritated afterwards, but mostly it's painless. They will sedate you uh, when they actually do the surgery. Uh, um, really, the when they use the graft of the amniotic membrane, it can heal pretty fast. And so through those weeks or maybe the months, you're going to be using definitely artificial tears. They may give you some different types of eye drops to help healing or an antibiotic to prevent any type of infection. And so you can expect eye drops, you know, eye patching, try not to rub the eyes. But now most of the time after you do the surgery, you should be able to go back to work maybe after a couple of days or a few days. And so that's what's nice about the surgery is. It, it may take a while to heal or fully heal up, but you should be back in action after a couple of days. Well, awesome. Again, thank you for walking us through the post-procedure there, Dr. Guyman. And Dr. Guyman, what are the signs and symptoms that we should probably be on the lookout for to alert us? Like maybe we should go see our doctor. So yeah, the big one and what most people will kind of notice is you'll have you know, something on your eye. And that's what will kind of scare people at first is so sometimes, and I'll get this a lot in the clinic, people will come rushing in, hey, I woke up this morning, looked in the mirror, and now I have some kind of spot or dot, or maybe there's some kind of red inflamed portion of their eye, wondering what it is. And likely, or sometimes it's a pterygium, or sometimes it's the evil sister called a pinguecula, where you have this growth just on the, the white part of the eye over the, the conjunctiva, the sclera over there. And so, uh, yeah, a lot of times people come running in like, Hey, you know, what should we, or what, you know, what, what do I need to do? But the signs and symptoms there are sometimes, you know, physically, or you can actually see it visually, but also sometimes they'll get red, irritated, they'll get inflamed. And so you might have a section of your eye that might be really red and kind of scary looking a little bit. 
uh, they could also become a little bit painful if they if they get too red or 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 too painful. But that's when you can go into your eye doctor because if it really is inflamed, they can actually give you some eye drops. Sometimes they'll give you steroid eye drops to decrease the inflammation, or put you some put you on some artificial tears, maybe thicker artificial tears, just to kind of coat the eye and calm it down. Well, again, perfect. Thank you for letting us know the signs and symptoms, Dr. Guyman. And earlier you said that you have usually when people find out, they like rush in and they let you know. Um, but like I'm, I'm thinking of how long should someone wait if they find out like, hey, if I don't want to rush in and be like, I'll look at it in my eye. That's fine. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I won't I won't come in right away. But uh, should that should that should people be coming in right away once they once they find out? Yeah, usually when I tell people if they if they notice anything new and it may not be new it may have been on the eye for a long time because it's really a slow progressive a slow progressing type of condition but if they notice it new all of a sudden when they wake up i wouldn't even wait i'll just go into the eye doctor just to make sure now these are benign a pterygium is benign but you just want to make sure that's actually what it is you want to make sure you get that official diagnosis that it's actually a pterygium and not something else and so you just want to go in the eye doctor just make sure that it's a pterygium Gotcha. Well, thank you for that information, Dr. Guyman. And I know we've, we've said it before uh, on this interview that it is benign, but is there any, are there any long-term side effects that this, this could cause? Um, the long-term side effects, I mean, really, if you kind of leave a pterygium, you don't really treat it. Maybe you're not wearing sunglasses, you're not using artificial tears, or maybe you're just genetically disposed to get a pterygium and it grows really fast then sometimes it can actually grow over the pupil and that's where it will actually become visually devastating. It'll actually start decreasing your vision or if it becomes really elevated, kind of beefy looking, then it sometimes can just stay inflamed, stay irritated, make your eyes really red. Sometimes your eyes will water all the time. And so if you let it go a long time, it can be become pretty kind of annoying in the future where you kind of get to that point where you're gonna need surgery to remove it. And so the long-term side effects are more, yeah, it can change the vision or decrease the vision and just become really irritating. Well, absolutely. You heard it from Dr. Guyman, everyone, please go see your doctor in case you see anything abnormal. Uh, Dr. Guyman, are, are there any new technologies or developments that are on the horizon that we should maybe look, be on the lookout for? Yeah. So I, I'm not sure about any new technologies al uh, along the horizon, but really with the treatment, kind of in the last year, well, longer than the last year, but really it's gained more steam is using amniotic membranes. And we actually use this in the clinic for other conditions, you know, keratitis, things wrong with the cornea, just to kind of stimulate healing. And they actually can use amniographs to help with a pterygium surgery afterwards it actually helps it heal a lot faster. And so that's been kind of nice to tell patients that, hey, there's there's this option and actually surgery goes quite well with this type of amniotic membrane that they can put on after the surgery. Oh, well, excellent. Again, thank you for that information, Dr. Guyman. And before we wrap up today, was there anything else that you would like to tell our audience about? No, just that, um, just remember if it's a trigium or if you have a dot, a bump on your eye, it may be a pinguecula, ping, you want to go into your eye doctor just to make sure that that's what it is. And, Really, a lot of the times pe people and patients are scared when they actually see this dot, but uh, really it become, and I actually have a pinguecula on my eye, so I kind of know the feeling, uh, but uh, yeah, just be sure, go into your eye doctor and just stay on top of your eye drops and sunglasses. It's good. Sunglasses are good for not only preventing or slowing the progression down of a pinguecula or a pterygium, but also for many other things. So might as well start wearing sunglasses right now. <laughs> Well, again, thank you for that information, Dr. Guyman. Everyone, that was Dr. Neil Guyman. Uh, Dr. Guyman, again, thank you so much for all the information today. Yeah, thanks for having me. That was great.